welcome to the fun and exciting crash course in quasi crystals. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> the first thing we're going to talk about is tiling. No, not quite that kind of tiling. We're actually going to be t making the tiles from various shapes. The idea is to see which tiles will fill the plane without leaving any gaps and figure out what it is about the geometry of these shapes that determines which ones will tile the plane and which ones won't. One thing we notice about all the shapes that tile the plane is that they have two or more lines of symmetry. This is because in order to get shapes to fit together without leaving any gaps, they need to be equal and opposite in two dimensions on both sides in order to, make, in order to tile the two-dimensional plane. Which of these shapes have symmetry? Which ones do you think will tile the plane? Correct me if I'm wrong, but these ones don't form patterns. The ones I've circled in green might, but I only need to test one of them because I can already identify them as homogeneous topological tra transformations of one another. Homogeneous means the same everywhere, or equal on all sides. And topology is a branch of mathematics that deals with the connectedness of points. So, this only works because I do the same thing to both sides, symmetrically. You can also through, this is how Escher made a lot of his um, tessellations and drawings, is you can cut a piece out of one side and, and glue it onto the other side through, uh, through the line of symmetry, and um, you'll find that the pieces will still tile the plane, and you can do that an indefinite number of times and, uh, in order to cut out pieces that look like an arm and then figure out where to make the hole and how to make the hole fit and work in well with the rest of the structure so that it actually look, makes a shape and looks like something. So an ordinary arrow will tile the plane, but however this arrow has a broken tail and will leave some gaps. Um, it turns out that all shapes which tile the plane obey several simple geometry rules. Um, one, the shape must have two or more lines of symmetry, and uh, the second one is that the angles on the shape must either add up to or divide evenly into 360 degrees in order to complete the circle and fill in the entire space. Um, when we expand from two dimensions to three, we are no longer tiling a plane but filling in 3D space. This is the geometry behind crystallography, the science of crystals. A crystal tiles the 3D plane in much the same way that a 2D tilings we just used. So only crystals are used only crystals use real atoms as the building blocks instead of like abstract shapes and lines on a piece of paper. The actual atoms are the building blocks which form these crystals in the way that they touch one another and connect. These are some examples of building block shapes that will tile the 3D plane so to speak and form crystals. You may not you may want to pause it for a second and note the geometry of these shapes and their symmetries. The rules for three dimensions are are similar to the ones for two dimensions. Only are you are dividing into a sphere instead of a circle, which means you are dealing with two angles instead of one. The polar angle must divide evenly into 180 degrees or one pi, while the azimuthal angle must divide evenly into 360 degrees or two pi. Um, this is because uh, in order to map out the entire area on the surface of a sphere, you would need to go straight from the North Pole to the South Pole through the polar angle 180 degrees. You only have to go halfway around to get to the other side. And then you take that line and then when you rotate it around, around the equator, you rotate it around that way and it basically covers the entire sphere and covers it all and that's why it's 2 pi. There are basically seven different crystal systems with defining symmetry, and uh, for more information, I suggest you go to Wikipedia and read up on crystals, uh, or whatever else you can find a book on crystals, or whatever else. Uh, I also suggest using the Microsoft Paint program or any other graphics program to fool around with shapes, copy and paste the shapes to tile the plane, and uh, if see if you can do it without rotating the shapes. Uh, if you don't have to rotate the shapes, this means they have translational symmetry. If you have to rotate them, that means they have rotational symmetry. Um, and 
basically, uh, you know, fool around with this until you feel comfortable that you understand a lot of uh, these things. And also, you know, do it on paper or even use a protractor to measure the angles of the shapes and uh, and see that, in fact, the ones that tile the plane do um, divide evenly into 360 degrees and they follow the rules that we set. And see if you can find any other rules that they may obey. So, the Penrose tiling, which is like a 2D quasi-crystal, only it doesn't exhibit, trans exhibit translational symmetry, it, it only exhibits rotational symmetry. Um, the Penrose tiling is a is a like a quasi crystal, like a, as a crystal is to a quasi crystal. That's what a Penrose tiling is to a standard tiling. Um, it's aperiodic; it doesn't repeat, and it's totally random. But somehow, over l long orders, it um, has these symmetries in them. It, like there are some sort of repetition. There is some sort of re repeating structure to it that ha causes the symmetry to appear further out within the crystal structure. Um, Quasi-crystals are basically structural forms that are both ordered and non-periodic. That means they, they form patterns that fill all the space but lack translational symmetry, like I said. The term and the concept were introduced originally to denote a specific arrangement observed in solids, which can be said to be in a state intermediary between crystal and glass, which produces Bragg diffraction. Um, these crystals share a defining property with normal crystals, but they differ from them by lacking a simple repeating structure. Um, mathematical artifacts, known as aperiodic tilings, were invented in the early 1960s, but some 20 years later, physical experiments gave conclusive evidence of their material existence. They're, they actually found them in nature, like found these materials which exhibited these aperiodic symmetries, or forbidden symmetries, seemingly aperiodic structure. Um, they actually found them in nature. So, within the field of crystallography and solid state physics, the discovery has produced a paradigm shift in which is indeed a minor scientific revolution. Um, number one, it was realized that quasi crystals have been investigated and observed earlier. And two, that until then, the prevailing views about the atomic structure of matter led to their being explained away. They just basically denied them. And people didn't want to understand them or change their current theories to uh, appropriate for new experimental findings in science. Well, this new science has come. The time has come for us to graduate from our childlike sciences and enter a world of much more complicated sciences. An ordering is non-periodic if it lacks translational symmetry. 